Ah, nekoši ne. Halo, halo, halo. Tagad vajadzētu būt, man vismaz rāda. Uh, trešais dubļs. Trešais dubļs. Testing dictionary speech configuration. Hello. Meanwhile, YouTube Live is starting, and if you'll have any questions, write them in the chat. I'll be able to see the chat in a minute or so. And while we're setting up, just waiting one or two minutes, and we'll start. Hello. Hello, everybody. I am Virus Town, and today we'll talk briefly about digitalization trends in Latvia and Ventspils. If you have any questions, and I really urge you to ask questions so we have somewhat meaning discussion, uh, meaningful discussion, uh, ask them in the YouTube comment section, and I will go through them as best as I can. Uh, I'll just have the screen with the comments in a minute. But uh, today I was asked to briefly talk about digitalization trends. Uh, the presentation will be just as a support and I want this to be more like a brief discussion and my point of view about the situation. So today we'll talk about who am I? What is CAT, what is MT, what is AI, and what is my view on translation technologies nowadays? Um, it will be a brief uh, discussion, but if you have any related topics you want to ask me, feel free to do that. Um, I'll just see. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm still uh, waiting for the comments to pop up, but uh, uh, they will be shortly. So who am I? 
Uh, I'm Vairis Saunen, and I'm an IT enthusiast since 2000. So it has been 21 years of uh, different kind of technical problem solving, including uh, a lot of Excel at the time, a lot of uh, different uh, ways how to help with the problems that are uh, for all the different uh, sides and different professions, including translation, uh, more about that a little bit later. Uh, I'm a language enthusiast since childhood. Uh, I almost went to translation faculty. Uh, there was a choice to be made. And finally, uh, I, I chose IT and I'm happy for it. Uh, but even though I still like to see what's happening in language domain, I like the uh, studies of etymology, how are words created and how people learn languages. Uh, I'm a rather technical mind and too technical for some and not technical enough for others. Uh, so I'm kind of in between, but I do have a lot of programming experience and I do talk, I do speak in four languages. So I have some language experience as well. Uh, today, uh, more about you guys. I guess a lot of you already know what CAT is. You can say in comments, yes or no, if you know what CAT is. Uh, computer assisted translation, sometimes called computer aided translation. And what I want to emphasize is that software is a hammer and translator is a carpenter. Uh, it is easier to work with a hammer if you want to put a nail in, but a hammer without the carpenter will not do much. And the same is here. Uh, it can help you but the main purpose is to uh, facilitate the tedious tasks that you have in order for you to be able to do more interesting and more meaningful things with your time in work, meaning. Uh, and CAT is based on different technologies underneath. One of them, uh, is machine translation. And it's not the same thing. Sometimes people confuse those two things. And uh, we saw previously computer assisted translation. Basically, computer suggests you from your previous translations or from dictionaries. Um, and you can choose which would be which phrase or which sentence or which word would be more appropriate. Machine, machine translation would be a more automated version. And there are uh, a lot of solutions that are already available. Unfortunately, most of them are bad. They are getting better, but uh, I want to assure you, uh, translators will not lose jobs soon, at least the good ones. Because when a machine translates a text, it will not necessarily, at least for now, uh, also uh, be able to convey the meaning and the right intent of the text. If I say, uh, should we go to the movies tonight? And I say, should we go to the movies tonight? Or should we go to the movies tonight? Uh, tonight? or should we go to the movies tonight? Those are three completely different sentences and spoken and written, you already have, uh, you already have some lost meaning when you write it down without the emphasis. And computer will not be able to, to know which one of the meanings uh, was uh, meant there. And of course, from the context, translator could understand uh, or misunderstand as well sometimes. But uh, translator is a human being. And if it's a human that uh, was talking in the source language, it will be easier for human 
to uh, have an empathy and understand what exactly was the message to convey. But machine translation is basically a tool that have uh, that that is fed with a lot of texts and their translations and how one text is translated to another. And with pretty neat technologies underneath, uh, it is able to afterwards suggest what should be the translation of a phrase. And it's often uh, misused, not often, but quite a lot actually. And uh, recent uh, example would be, uh, we had COVID pandemics and uh, uh, you need to write different documents for different institutions, how to, uh, how you will be uh, managing uh, everything and uh, why should you be funded. And uh, if you just put them in machine, tra uh, machine translation uh, directly, uh, you would be surprised of the results because first of all, it's a text that is not usually present in the context. So you need to have uh, people who have adapted to it. And if you just use it straight away, uh, it might give you the results that are, let's say, not particularly good or meaningful. Hence, uh, translators will not lose, uh, how to say, demand in the market, at least the good ones. That's my opinion. However, uh, I would encourage everybody in all the domains to think about uh, what are the parts that could be automated that are tedious, but not necessarily uh, brain demanding. Uh, sorry, for lack of a better term, uh, I, I use this one. And talking with different IT specialists, you can uh, communicate and explain what are the things that you are doing now, but you don't want to do because it's tedious. And it's really important to explain the situation because IT, spe uh, IT specialists will not necessarily have the same background and knowledge they will not have the same background and knowledge as you do. And uh, they will be able to solve a really wide range of problems. So if they ask you, can we help you? Uh, you should really think about it and think what are those things that you think are easy and that you could explain to uh, six-year-old, for example, or 10-year-old uh, to do, take this word and put it in that column and take this word and put it in that column. Uh, if you need to do that yourself, you have less time to actually work on the specifics and conveying the message rather than the technicalities. And technical forming is where computer science can help you a lot. A little bit, so you have some uh, IT uh, knowledge more than you had today. You, you can say uh, also in the comments, I think the comment section is empty, uh, not, not as full as I would like it to be, but what is AI? And most likely it's not what you think it is. And it is definitely not what a lot of companies say it is. The definitions have uh, changed a lot over the years. And it's basically, I would like to have a equivalency with the word hacker. Um, back in the days, there were two terms, a hacker and a cracker. A cracker is somebody that uh, breaks into systems and does some malicious actions and uh, does a lot of bad things. Hacker is somebody who likes to understand how things work and likes to dig and try to figure out how things work. 
And of course, over the time now, when somebody says hacker, everybody says, oh, that's the bad guy. So people who were actually identifying themselves as hackers said, well, uh, you're using hacker wrong, but everybody is using hackers. So they started using nominations like um, ethical hacker or white hat hacker uh, as opposed to uh, black hat hacker. And it's, uh, well, it's a natural way of uh, language evolution. And the same is with AI. AI is uh, a broader term, which would basically mean a system that could adapt itself to uh, different problems and uh, solve them, or see and identify the problems that they are not introduced, uh, they, they haven't been introduced yet. So a lot of what you see uh, is what, what is advertised as AI is mostly machine learning. And machine learning uh, is a term that most of you probably haven't heard if AI is a lot of uh, all over the place. You have AI this and AI that. Uh, machine learning is a little more defined idea is you have basically a box with matrices and stuff and you have training data. Let's say you want somebody to uh, learn arithmetic. So instead of programming all the numbers and programming all the results and the actions and how it works, you would put two plus two on input. And there's like a lot of numbers that would go through that two and two, examine the two, examine the plus, examine the two. Uh, and on the output, you say, do what you want inside your box with all the numbers you have, with all the formulas you have there, but I want four at the exit. So it's basically like a kid is learning. If you ask what is two plus two, he does no, you say four. So you ask what is two plus three and the kid might say four. So you say, no, it's five. So you ask what is two plus two, which is five. So by reiterating, you say, no, it's four. By 10th iteration, when you say two plus two, you'll be able to say four and two plus three will be five. And the same is with machine learning. We have a lot of input data, a lot of output data, and we urge the computer to change all the parameters so that two plus two would be four and two plus three would be five. And the nice thing about it is that in that way, with this approach, you can solve variety of problems. Okay, one is two plus two. But let's say you want a machine to be able to recognize triangles. If you want to describe a triangle, uh, it's a lot of work. You could say, yes, you need to find lines. You need to see that there are three of them and they are connected. Uh, and triangle is a simple example. But for example, a cat, uh, that gets more complicated. So what you need to do uh, with like conventional tools would be make a lot of edge case programming saying, yeah, there should be fur and you need to recognize what fur is. And it's a really complicated problem. And that's why like 15 years ago, uh, it was said that, yeah, no computers cannot uh, detect if it's a cat. Now, uh, using machine learning, uh, it is, uh, well, it is not uh, elementary, it's not obvious, but it's a problem that uh, has been solved uh, quite easily. So here the same, uh, not two plus two and two plus three, but the cat and the uh, dog. So you give a lot of cat photos, a lot of dog photos, well, cat photos are always easy to find in internet. But yeah, so you need to have a lot of data. 
and we'll get back to it in a translation context as well. So you have a lot of data and by lot, I mean like few tens of thousands of cat photos and few tens of thousands of dog photos if you want to distinguish cats and dogs. If you want it to be able to distinguish all the animals, so you also need a training set for all the animals. Here, we also see the problem when you have uh, unforeseen situation, the, uh, the neural networks, which are basically the, the big matrices, uh, will not be able to recognize a parrot from cats and dogs because he does not know what a parrot is. He will not be able to uh, see, oh, this is uh, something unknown. Let me Google it. And uh, this is probably a parrot. Unless you trained uh, the machine to do that. But that's a different story. So nowadays, seeing triangles or calculations or even uh, words that are input uh, in inputs and outputs is a rather trivial problem in uh, context of machine learning. Uh, so afterwards, well, of course, you will not uh, have a uh, answer that's a cat. You'll have computers saying, "I'm 99.99 percent uh, sure it's a cat, and 0.01 percent sure that it's Elon Musk." So it's up for you to decide whether it's really Elon Musk or cat, but the computer is able to sift through it way quicker. So it can do the tedious task of selecting everything that looks like a cat. So afterwards, you can uh, have your photo album of uh, most beautiful cats in my yard uh, from 2005 till now. Um, and uh, about translation technologies in, in Latvia and in Ventspils, uh, there are a lot of uh, work going on. And uh, it's, well, since it's technologies and translation, you can already see that it's two parts of the equation. You have uh, IT with the technology part, and you have uh, translators with the translation problematic part. Um, and I need to admit that from IT perspective, we are, uh, our students are doing some, uh, some projects with the translation faculty, but they are nowhere near the level I would like them to be. We are working on that. Uh, and in Latvia in general, I would like to emphasize the enterprise called Tilde. Uh, and they are doing a really great job in uh, a lot of domains connected to Latvian language. Um, and they also have their machine translation tool. And of course, uh, not everybody can use uh, all the tools that are available out there. And that's a little bit more about jurisdiction problems. But sometimes we already have the tools available, but we just don't know about them. So it's always good to ask to your professors and uh, in IT domain, I want something to translate this. Is it possible? Uh, because the research is ongoing, and especially in uh, less covered languages like Latvian, it's not uh, the same route as English. And of course, in English, there, there is a ton of research done, uh, way more than in, uh, let's say, Latvian, Ukrainian, Slo Slovakian uh, languages combined. So uh, we have our uh, research going on, and Tilda is one of the uh, flagments who is going and really developing a lot of tools. Uh, 
I see one of the great opportunities for the next few years uh, in translation technologies that are connected, but not may, uh, may, maybe directly translation is speech synthesis and also speech recognition, uh, because there are a lot of existing, uh, no, a lot of existing tools and uh, possibilities and softwares for English, but they will not work good um, for different languages. And the same we go about the data. If you have what for English language, you'll have a lot of texts recorded and transcribed. You will have them also for your local language, but not as much. And uh, there's a very uh, big problem in machine learning. Uh, if I go back, uh, if you have photos of cats and one of them is a photo of dog that was wrongly labeled. It's like teaching your kids and uh, saying, and this is a desk. Well, the kid will say, okay, you're sure, but okay, I will say this is a desk. If you have wrong data that you are training on, it will give really bad results. So uh, if we want the technologies for our local language to advance, we need to think about uh, how to help the uh, IT persons with the data that they need in order to be able to uh, teach neural networks or enable to better understand the problem. Uh, because IT professionals will most likely not be well versed in how the language tree is uh, constructed and how everything works and how should you disassemble a sentence in one language and then uh, convey the meaning and build the tree in another language. Uh, so those kind of data would be really helpful. And I think uh, there will be as well, uh, not a lot, but more uh, technical translate, uh, translator positions or jobs uh, that will deal with uh, preparing the data for those tools. Because, uh, well, IT special, uh, specialists have a lot of knowledge, but uh, their knowledge would be better used in order to already solve the problem once the tree is built uh, and uh, and using the, uh, their knowledge to do the next step. If they need to uh, spend their time doing uh, different things, they'll have less time to actually make the IT part. And well, so that would be one thing, speech th synthesis and recognition. Uh, I would, well, there, there, there is already more and more advances. There are more and more advances in the domain, uh, but I think it will uh, flourish even more. Uh, another thing that uh, is, is a translation, but is not necessarily uh, thought as, a, as of a translation is um, sign languages. And uh, computer is rather good at uh, detecting different positions of arms and heads and body. And we have uh, programmed diff different applications for uh, analyzing human gait and walking, uh, as well as, uh, I don't know, if they are smoking or uh, if they are falling down. Uh, and here as well, we can make a system that will uh, recognize the gestures of word and meaning and saying what is my name is and uh, all, all the letters. But in order to do that, we need data. So we need somebody that have the uh, people doing the gestures and talking 
in sign language, as well as that video labeled here from, from this part to this part, he is saying my or me. So we can do that step from uh, video, if you have already some data from video to text of the words, but as well, it will be uh, not sufficient to convey all the messages because humans will still need to go over, but it is way easier to see the text and just go through and maybe do some small corrections compared to going through everything and writing everything down. So uh, that would be my short take on the problem. Uh, I'm not sure anybody is, I have 25 people watching now and uh, I have no questions. So I would ask you, if you don't have any questions, write, I don't have any questions. So I know at least you are hearing me. Because for the moment, I, I see nothing. Are you interested at all? Did you learn something new? Uh, do you want to, to know something? Do you understand? Should I speak slower or faster? Okay, at least I have, I don't have any questions. Uh, so yeah, at least I see somebody uh, yeah, how do you, uh, a good question, how do you deal with languages with only very few speakers? Uh, that is actually a very great question. As I uh, told you before, it is, um, well, it's the same as with translating. If you have a language that is <clears throat> spoken by a lot of people, uh, let's say from uh, English to German translators, there will be a lot of translators as well. Whereas if you need the direct translation from, uh, let's say, French to Latvian, there will be far fewer people who are able to do the direct translation. So it will be actually, most likely it will be cheaper to, to go with the translation from uh, French to English and then English to Latvian, which is what actually Google Translate did for years. I'm not sure they're do still doing it now. So yeah, if you have very few speakers, uh, if it means that you have very few data, uh, then you have a problem. But like a counter example would be Latin. You have uh, rather few speakers and uh, almost nobody speaks Latin, uh, but uh, you have a lot of data you could be analyzing. So I would think about it more in terms of data and not of speakers, but if, if you use it as a synonym, uh, then I would say, yeah, it's a problem. It's a big problem, and uh, there, there is no really good way how to solve it. What could be done, however, uh, is let's say you have, well, the same example with the cats and dogs. Uh, let's say you have uh, skinny cats that have no fur. Uh, and you want also them to be included in, in the system, but you have only a few photos of them. What you can do is you can train the machine already for this cat and dog problem. And afterwards, 
when it's already trained for that, you tune it with less data. So you have something that is already kind of, uh, that has learned some things, and then you add few data, but more specific ones. It's uh, the same when you uh, have taught a kid how to do all the multiplications with a lot of the examples. And then you want to say, oh, and this is how uh, you use modulus operation, like divide and the reminder. When you have something that is already trained or someone, it is easier to add a specific feature with less uh, training data. So my suggestion would be uh, if there is a language that is similar, uh, then try to uh, teach on that and then see if the data you have from that language with very few speakers uh, that could uh, use already the pre-trained uh, model. Model meaning uh, the, the black box here with, with all the matrices. Uh, so, um, uh, ta -ta 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 is it efficient uh, to analyze scanned books to improve translations? Um, so, uh, if I understand the question correctly, uh, the question is, would scanning books uh, help in improving translations uh, from better than Todd? So if the question is, would scanning books improve translations? Uh, not directly. Uh, but it could help in building the language trees uh, themselves. A book that has been translated, if you have, uh, let's say, uh, some book translated in one language and you have the original that you, you can scan, then yes, you'll have the original text transcribed uh, in text instead of uh, photos. And then you can recognize that you, you have already the text of origin and text of uh, the destination, and then that would help. But just uh, having the books scanned and digitalized would not directly help in translation, but it could help in uh, building the knowledge about the language itself. Uh, would different dialects in a set of data make the translation program better or, or less good? It's actually a good question. Uh, I, uh, I would like, it's a, a little bit of stipulation, but it's, a, it's an educated guess. Uh, I would say it would be more versatile, but not as good for specific language. Uh, it's the same thing, uh, like I used QWERTY for almost all my life till I went to France and I started using AZERTY, which is a different uh, keyboard layout. You have uh, Q and W switched with A and Z, you have uh, M and N switched some, uh, I think, and well, some, some small uh, changes. What happened? is I started writing slower. And uh, it was painful to admit that now I write slower because I needed to actually think whether I'm using French or Latin keyboard every time I, I wrote or QWERTY or AZETI, not Latin necessarily. So it will be more versatile, but not necessarily uh, better, most likely will not be better for the exact uh, language without dialects. So if you train them with dialects, uh, they will most likely be able to uh, also understand dialects better. If you train them 
uh, on dialects, but it uses a uh, uh, pure British English. It will probably not be as good as if you only trained it only using uh, British English. The same with American or uh, American English and British English versus uh, the mixture of both, or only one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, different dialects in a set of data. It is uh, actually it is a good uh, good question about the data set. And here I will reiterate again: a lot depends on the data you are training on. Uh, let's say if you have uh, machine learning that uh, have men and women, but they only have white people, the machine learning algorithms will not be as good in detecting black people and vice versa. If you have a uh, a lot of white people and black people, men and women, but from those, let's say, uh, most of the women would be black and most of the men would be white, you would have more problems detecting white women and black men because you have less data and it's kind of biased. It's the same as with uh, human learning. If I give you, uh, 100 exercises and uh, 48 of them is uh, if I go from this city with that speed and from that city to, uh, with that speed where and when I will meet and 48 are uh, wind is blowing uh, in that direction the sailing boat has a motor uh, what will be the speed of the motorboat at the end uh, and only two examples are completely different. Of course, the student will have a harder time solving those because he will not have the habit of solving those kind of problems. So uh, it, it is, well, maybe uh, strange to think, oh yeah, it's like uh, teaching uh, a human. In a way, it actually kind of is if you train it to one thing, it will be better at that thing. So would different dialects in a set of data make the translation program better or less good? It depends on the purpose and what you define as a better program. Uh, we are watching in group and we liked, yeah. So, yes. Um, what else could I add? Um, yeah, well, that is basically all I wanted to say today. Uh, about the student works, I could add that we have uh, started do, doing some uh, gestures for uh, uh, mouth movements and uh, and hand gestures in order to, to actually build uh, translators from the gestures. And actually it's the same problem as with everything. Uh, you would think that sign language in uh, Latvia, England and the United States would be the same, which is, not, which is not the case. So in order to build something like that, uh, you need somebody that actually understands the problem, the local problem. And of course, uh, some uh, pre-trained models from uh, uh, American uh, sign language that is used in America uh, that afterwards uh, are adjusted and uh, trained uh, more on Latvian examples would, would do better. Uh, but it's the same problem with the data. Uh, Uh -huh. So here as well, uh, there are languages which have uh, the question from uh, uh, Michel Boron. 
I sorry if I butcher, uh, butchered your name. There are languages which have genders with different forms for each gender. How do you cope with uh, exceptions like translations from English, where there are no genders, into a language with genders? Uh, and here is the same thing, uh, as I said before, with the triangles. Uh, if I would program it myself, I would have a hard time putting all the exceptions in. If I have a lot of texts about, uh, well, uh, about, uh, a lot of data about translations from, uh, let's say, uh, heart in French, it's the genders are all, all over the place, depending uh, if it's uh, singular or plural. Uh, and if I don't have any ex examples, I'll have very hard time. But if I have example here and example there, so input is uh, uh, gender uh, neutral heart, output is uh, uh, her, this gender, here you go. If I have enough data, uh, the neural networks will be able to adjust. And what I mean by that uh, is, it's not like magically they will see that there is a gender, but they will have input information. And uh, on the output, they will they will change the the inner numbers. While if you ask heart, they will be able to say it's cur and the gender and everything else that goes with it because it had. Uh, 1,000 of examples with different phrases with heart, or uh, 1,000 phrases where 500 were in one uh, way and 500 were in other way, and the 500 translations in French were different from uh, the other 500 translations. So uh, it's all about the data. So if you want uh, the, the system to, uh, cope with the exceptions, you actually need to provide data with those exceptions. And that's, uh, that's why usually programmers are such a, uh, how to say, uh, I would say maybe stingy. You ask them something and they are like all the time talking about edge cases because edge cases is what matters us the most. So if you say, yeah, everything is translated like this, and uh, IT is like, but yeah, but this is an exception, that is an exception, because we need to consider almost everything. And the, the nice thing with machine learning is the approach is not adjust your problem and programs like specific ex uh, exception, but uh, give a lot of data and uh, give a lot of what you would expect. Of course, like together, like sets of them. Afterwards, of course, uh, you could go through it and say, uh, if you have a machine translator that uh, uh, translates from one language where there are no genders into another language, uh, my suggestion for the translation tool would be uh, it highlights the, the parts that is predefined to be highlighted. For example, when there's a passage from a, a non-gender word to a gender word, highlight it for the translator to check if the gender was correctly applied. Uh, did I answer Baron's question? I hope so. So yeah, uh, quick conclusions, uh, if we go through. Uh, I do like IT and uh, I am fascinated by uh, how words are created, how languages are created and how they evolve and how can we convey the meaning of something, whether it's in the same language or different language. Uh, it also goes together uh, with answer why am I teaching? Because I like to uh, understand how I understand something 
and how would I explain it in maybe maybe doing a vulgarization of something, but without being uh, inco uh, uh, incoherent again, like without losing the correctness, I can still simplify a lot of things. And if you understand something, you can also, in most cases, simplify what's happening. So I like to do that. And uh, I like to talk with people and share my opinions and uh, and hear, uh, hear theirs and have a discussion. Uh, if you didn't know what cat is, it's not only meow cat, but it's also a computer, uh, computer assisted translation that uh, if you are doing any translation work, it's a must have. I know translators that uh, have started without using it and now is really happy. Machine translation is more like a technical underneath thing that uh, sometimes is uh, sold like a ready solution, but it is actually a tool that should be used to do the legwork so you don't have to do some tedious work. We talked a little bit, uh, a little bit about AI and machine learning. Uh, and we talked about what are my views about the future. So speech synthesis, speech recognition, uh, gestures. Uh, and I hope this was a nice uh, like kind of break for you uh, from different language uh, details, because this was kind of technical, but not, not really technical presentation. Uh, so I thank you all, and I think my time is over. And you have uh, they have food break? No, they have. Yeah, so you have break. Uh, I'm. Uh, it's not your summer break yet, uh, but I wish you all the best. Thanks uh, for all the questions. Try to answer as good as I could, uh, and I hope to see or uh, talk with some of you in different circumstances again. So thank you. It was a pleasure and have a nice day.